You're listening to Me and Paranormal You with your host, Ryan Singer. It's more fun to believe. Third, third year, year bonus. bonus. Hello and welcome to another third year bonus. This is your buddy, Ryan Singer. Uh, this is me and Paranormal You. This is a solo episode of the podcast, The Mindcast, as once upon a time, it was called The Mindcast. That confused almost everyone. So we call it a podcast, which everyone knows what a podcast is. Do people understand what a mindcast is? I don't know. Maybe I just start a new show called The Mindcast. Um, maybe I'll Google that to see if that already exists. I don't know where this one is going. So if uh, stream of consciousness is not your bag, time to uh, time to bail. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where this one's even going to go inside. You know, I just had a great conversation with Jim Perry today. That's going to come out probably like a month or whenever it comes out. I just, but he uses like the feed, the euphemet feed, like everything all encompassing under the umbrella, which would be for me, it would be milkshake town, you know, the, uh, or, you know, you know, not rising productions anymore, but you know, me and paranormal you, like, what are we doing here? Uh, the bridge is under that umbrella, the documentary series. I'm going to be working on that here at the watering hole is where I am now. I'm going to record this and then I'm going to go to find food. I've been here. Uh, I don't know, going on seven hours. So I need to, uh, get some sustenance and then I'm going to get some video editing done either here or at home. I'm not sure which yet, but that's not important. The important part is I've been having some really fascinating conversations that I'm excited to be sharing with you here in the very near future. Those will be coming out every Tuesday. Um, you know, maybe Thursdays, maybe Friday, Wednesdays. I don't know. I'm just going to be putting episodes out whenever I feel like it. I'm no longer going to be sticking to this. I'd like to have at least one a week, if not two a week, but uh, I'm not sticking to set days, even though that's probably not a bad idea. But maybe after nearly nine plus years, you think you would have some kind of set schedule, but it doesn't matter. What I want to discuss today is the idea that I want to get into a little bit about the etymology of the word ghost and the increase in appearance of the word ghost has skyrocketed in the last few years as far as just being being out there. And there was a dip for quite a while. Um, it used to be, you know, a some, somewhat common word in the English language, at least as far as like, you know, books and things like that and just in conversations, I suppose, then it kind of dipped down and then boom, now it's skyrocketing. Now, why is that? It's in conjunction with lots of things, I, I suppose. Uh, there's, there's always more than one answer for an explanation. There, or there's always more than one explanation for why something happens and why something is becoming a thing. Um, you know, what, what are people looking for? What do people want? Um, it's, it's, it occurs to me recently that the being a part of the paranormal world, which we all are just in general, but having done a podcast for, you know, we're coming up on 700 episodes, which I would say is a lot. <laughs> I would say that's a lot of episodes. Have we learned anything uh, along the way? And, and certainly we've, we've learned probably a lot. And by we, I mean me and all my friends like Diner Dan and some of these other characters, I can't remember their names, but I'd have to go back and listen uh, or to try to, I don't know. Does anybody have a list of all these different people that sometimes pop in on the third year bonuses? I, I can't remember who they are. Um, although one day I'm sure they'll pop back in again and I will remember, but they will remind me of who they are. One thing we've learned about the paranormal so far is that more and more people are becoming open to the idea that phenomenon and the supernatural and the unknown is very prevalent around us. And with that prevalence comes interest, comes intrigue, comes excitement. Now, so many brilliant people are involved in this world. So many thoughtful people, so many eloquent speakers and just brilliant minds um 
it's it, it's a privilege to get to speak with them you know all the time and and it's just as much a privilege to speak with people who aren't seeking out the spotlight um you know normal paranormal people has i mean normal has such a bad connotation and i'm not sure why um you know the normal will be paranormal soon but i'm talking about people who aren't interested in like the spotlight or entertainment. And oftentimes I will hear the phrase, you know, I, oh, no one wants to hear my story. I'm not that interesting. And every person is interesting. As long as there's someone who's interested. And that's my job. My job is to be interested. And it's not very hard. It's not hard work because everyone is interesting. As long as you're interested. I mean, it's like the chicken or the egg thing, right? So everyone has compelling stories to tell. They have insightful memories, experiences that are inherently interesting. And that's what I focus on, I think, in just my life in general. I've, I've come to realize in the last couple of years, it's like, I just need to be I just need to be interested in life. And sometimes we go through depression. I had some serious depression issues, um, you know, during the second half, towards the end of the pandemic and, and, you know, and after. And it was difficult to be interested in life. It was, di di it was difficult to be interested in anything, quite frankly. So recapturing our interest in life or my interest in life has been paramount in priorities for me and not that there's levels of interest I, I don't want to say certain interests are more exciting than others i just know that we are called to specific interests depending on our personality types or our personal experiences for me paranormal experiences are of the highest interest for me. I love paranormal storytelling. I love movies. I love hearing someone tell a story for the millionth time, if, if in fact it's the millionth time they've told it. Uh, maybe it's only the first or second or third time I've heard the story. Some stories are so good, you can hear them over and over again. People go and see movies over and over again. Um, some people have said, like, you, you'll mention the shape-shifting thing and you don't go into it and it's it's aggravating. And I would just say, you know, listen to the very first episode. It's called Origins. It's 15 minutes long. It gives you the shapeshifter story and my experience with that. Um, I've had other experiences as well. I Every time I reference them or, or I just can't tell the whole story again. So those that interview experience number 76, the interview with the shapeshifter is out there. It's on YouTube. It's in the podcast feed. You can find it. Also, the Origins. 15 minute episode if this if you're new to this and you're wondering why is this guy talking about the paranormal why is he interested he's a stand-up comedian and an actor and etc those will that's the kickoff that's the that's the creation event right is that experience what as far as pushing me further off the ledge into the world of the unknown to where it starts to consume me and I've dedicated a large part of my life now, seemingly. <laughs> I've dedicated almost 25% of my life, 20% for sure, over 20%, but under 25%, I suppose, of doing this podcast. I, God, I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud. So a large portion of my life has gone to the production of this, of this show. And um, I don't know, I... And if you've been listening since the beginning, I mean, you know, universe bless you. I, 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 I greatly appreciate that. But what we're dealing with now is we're dealing in the year 2023. We're dealing with the awakening of people coming to the paranormal. We're dealing with a decline in organized religion, having a grip or an influence on people. We are dealing with breakthroughs 
in science that are moving so quickly that it can be daunting, oftentimes scary for us to think about. Specifically, AI is probably the big one that I think scares most of us. You know, global destruction uh, at our by our own hands is probably the number one thing that I lay awake at night, uh, unable to sleep because I'm thinking about. But what is the reason? You listen to someone like Whitley Stryber talk about, uh, there's a great interview with Whitley uh, by my buddy Jim Perry. And it's, it's on his uh, new show called The Signal. Uh, the more like one-on-one -on -one long depth, uh, in-depth interviews, as opposed to the classic documentary style Euphemet episodes. And Whitley touches on, you know, what are they doing? What are, why are they taking all of, the, all of this semen? Why are they taking the eggs from millions of people? Why they're clearly creating human beings and why, what's why? And that's the big, that's the big question. My buddy, Greg Feynman, who's been on the show a bunch of times also talks about this and talks about the, the plan as he has come to know it regarding abductions and the extraction of reproductive fluids and, you know, eggs and things like that. And it all deals with consciousness and the separation of consciousness in human form and physical form. And then the future, you know, throw those things in, throw a little, sprinkle in a lot of the future, throw in some destruction. And I mean, it can get pretty dark and it can get pretty scary oftentimes. But at the end of the day, listen, all we got is right now. All we have is right now. And uh, I'm not going to live my life closed off to the idea that there could be a ghost in this studio right now. I, I just, I'm not calling them in over here to the, to the watering hole, but I'm also not saying, you know, I'm not a skeptical person by nature. Uh, I want to see the best in people. I want to see the best in the dead. Not only do I want to see the best in people, I want to see the best in dead people as well. I also want to see the best in entities or energies or spirits. There's, there's so much time we have here. And I know the sentence is there's so little time we have here, but I also feel like there's so much time we get to be alive. Uh, I feel like it is time well spent exploring the unknown, the supernatural and the paranormal and trying to learn uh, more about what is the mystery of the universe. Um, especially something as simple as a ghost, right? I mean, I, I'm trying to, I had a, I was having a conversation the other day with someone and the, the interview is not out yet, but we were talking about like, oh, when, you know, cause it sounds a lot like Geist. Uh, it turns out ghost is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it comes from aghast, the phrase, the word aghast, which is what a great word I should just be using aghast more often. I'm aghast that I haven't been using the word aghast. But so you can see how a gas turns into a ghost, turns into a ghost. Uh, we like to shorten things. We like to be efficient, right? Um, old English, ghast, breath, good or bad spirit, angel, demon, person, man, human being. In biblical use, soul, spirit, life. From Proto-West Germanic, gastas, source also of Old Saxon, guest, Old Frisian, jest, see these connections here jest and ghost jest and ghost are like related to one another it was like predetermined it was destiny for a comedian like myself who loves the, the world of jest to show up in the world of ghast this is conjectured to be uh from a pie root uh geist used in forming words involving the notions of excitement amazement or fear uh, uh, source also of Sanskrit heda, quote unquote, wrath, avestan zesha, horrible, frightful, Gothic, uskashan, Old English, gastain, to frighten. Ghost is the English representative of the usual West Germanic word for supernatural being. In Christian writing in Old English, it is used to render Latin spiritus, see spirit, uh, which uh, we all know that word, a sense preserved in Holy Ghost. Sent, you know, the Holy Ghost is the spirit that moves through you. You can, uh, you know, do you feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost in you? I mean, so these words are 
uh, interconnected and I was going to say forever, but it does anything last forever. And then the spirit or the ghost would say, well, yeah, duh, it's in the name. Um, most Indo-European words for soul or spirit also double with reference to supernatural spirits. Many have a base sense of appearance, such as Greek phantasma, French specter, Polish widmo from old church, Slavonic bedeti, to, which means to see. So the GH spelling appeared uh, early in, 15, in the 15th century, it looks like, in Caxton, influenced by Flemish and Middle Dutch geest. <laughs> geest. There's a geest. Um, it just reminds me of So I Married an Axe Murderer, uh, starring Mike, Mike Myers. Uh, hid, you know, like geest. Okay, so, uh, but with, geest, but was rare in English before mid 16th century sense of quote slight suggestion mere shadow or semblance end quote in ghost image ghost of a chance ghost of a chance etc so yeah there's a uh you know odds are odds are odds are low it's 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 almost as if you just get a scent of something right um that's interesting um that, that, that was all first recorded in the 1600, in the very early 1600. Sense of, sense of one who secretly does work for another is from 1884. Ghost Town started in 1908, it looks like. Ghost Story, uh, 1811. Ghost Word, apparent word or false form in a manuscript due to a blunder. So it starts losing its woo-woo meanings and starts, you know, also taking on practical practical meanings uh, or definitions uh, being combined with you know the the material world and the functions of which are operating around us in day to day right so ghost runner on second base if you ever played wiffle ball with a friends with your friends and or something or baseball or you know or kickball or whatever you didn't have enough kids to be on base you'd have a ghost runner um, you know on second base or wherever else uh, Ghost in the Machine was British philosopher Gilbert Ryle's term, and that's from 1949, uh, for, quote, the mind viewed as separate from the body, end quote, which, yeah, uh, on board with that. As an idealist, we are on board with that is obviously the case, that the mind is 100% separate from the body, yet it is together. Now, when you feel pain, there is a difference between physical and emotional pain, which is, I'm just kind of thinking of this off the top of my head right here, off the top of my head. It's like a ghost thought. Um, the difference between physical anguish and mental anguish, mental anguish can lead to physical anguish and vice versa. I think both can lead to the other, yet being burned by a match feels differently than being burned by a friend or a lover or something like that, right? I just love saying lover. Um, so I, I do think that most of us understand and would agree that the mind is separate from the body and that the mind is the ghost in the machine of our body. Uh, the phrase give up the ghost, that means to die. It comes, I was in old English. Uh, you know, there's ghost writers. That's actually a job. You could be a ghost writer. Isn't that, isn't that kind of funny? Well, like I said, the trends of ghosts, uh, you know, have skyrocketed, especially in the last uh, three to four years um, in the entries that are linking to ghost. Um, spirit, uh, spiritism, uh, ghostly poltergeist, uh, zeitgeist is actually connected, uh, turns out, to all this. And so... So it looks like ghost comes from a ghast, uh, you know, as I thought it might not, I thought, I thought it was going to be something else. Um, and a ghast is not a word that you, uh, you know, you're seeing a, a ton of anymore. Um, but uh, like a ghast, you know, circa 1300, a terrified, suddenly filled with frightened amazement um, to frighten, to terrify from ghast. And that comes from ghost, spirit, ghost, sea ghost. On a, uh, okay. Uh, so we think the GH came from a, uh, a Flemish influence. Huh. 
anyway, I mean, there's more to, it looks like there's more to dig into here. Um, the idea of a ghost story or of a spirit or of a specter or of a phantasma, I mean, it obviously is older than the word ghost, but the conversation I specifically was having with uh, that it'll be coming up is, you know, how all of a sudden, you know, the at one point the word ghost had to be a weird thing. People were talking about, people were talking about ghosts. It was a weird thing, but now ghost has become practical. I mean, you can have a job as a ghost writer. So the word ghost is no longer strange. It's no longer outside. It is now inside this bubble. So what does that even mean? And why are we even talking about it? And that's a very good question. And I'm going to answer that as soon as we get back from a quick little commercial. I'm going to throw in a commercial in here right now. So we'll be right back. And we're back. So if you're a patron over patreon.com backslash Ryan Singer, you're not hearing any of those commercials that uh, the others have heard. And that's for $3 a month. You can get all that. And there's other tiers as well you can get. So why is it important to even try to wrap our brains around like you know the meanings of words or the origins of words i mean all of these things are important and they're more important to some people than to other people but i love words and i love origins and i love the meanings and the definitions but especially i love the acceptance of a word that represents something so strange being so normal and the word ghost is so normal it instantly conjures <laughs> conjures uh, images for people, skeptical or a believer. It doesn't matter. Ghost is a pretty clear, even though totally nebulous word. And, and the images that are conjured by it, I should say, are very clear, even though they might slightly different in personality or characteristic. It is at, at the heart of the matter. It's the same. Uh, it doesn't matter if you believe in ghosts or not. Those connotations will affect in your mind's eye what image you conjure, whether it's a cartoon ghost from Scooby-Doo or whether it's a full body apparition of maybe like an old soldier or your grandmother that you've seen when you were a child or even as a grown up in your home, in an old family home or maybe at a, at a, a cemetery late at night when you're out there with some friends and some night vision cameras. The point is, in my opinion, the fact that ghost has become so mainstream and the word is so normal and that it has been used for very practical reasons in combination with other words that you could have a job as a ghost writer, which everyone knows what that is. It, that has to happen first. Does that make sense? I think that has to happen before the world has to accept the normalcy of the word that represents the thing that we want them to accept as normal, as real, right? I think you can see this in our society with other things. And the fact that a lot of people struggle with the concept that somebody wants to use a different pronoun, for example, is it's mind-blowing to me it doesn't make any sense to me why that's an issue for them but it, what it represents is even more difficult for them to wrap their brain around does that make sense um and it's not just for like you know gender fluid people and things like that. that like that's just an example that i think is very resonant right now in culture currently but we have to be in society in general when society in general incorporates into total normalcy a word that represents something strange and therefore the word is new or strange to many people because it's different once that becomes incorporated and normalized, that is an indication that the thing that it's representing is well on its way, hopefully, to also being normalized because it's an understanding, it's an acceptance on a societal level that this is normal. 
and it doesn't need to be a thing. It's just, that's what we call that thing. You know, this is a table, that's a chair, that's a ghost. So the fact that ghost has been incorporated in normal for so long indicates to me that we have long been on the road. And the further we go down this road, the higher the number of people who will be walking it and will be open to have to see a ghost, to just believe eyewitness testimony of those close to them, to understand that it's possible, even though they've never seen it, like a black hole. So many people believe in a black hole that have never seen one. Even if they've seen a picture of it, they're like, I well, I've seen a picture of it, but I've never seen one. But people who were smarter than them told them that black holes were real, so they believed it. So if we could just get everyone who doesn't believe in ghosts to admit that they're dumber than all the people who say that ghosts are real, we'd be in good shape. <laughs> Is that how this works? I'm not calling people stupid. That's not what we're here to do. That's not what we're here to do. I am definitely not going to call people stupid. This is a guy who, if you knew some of the stupid things I've done, I always leave something in this office, in the studio. Every time I leave, I leave. And 50% of the time, it's my computer cord. So I'll get home and I'm like, oh, I can't even... I meant to do, I meant to like finish editing something or work on something else. And I can't because I left my power cord here. I've done it three times in about a week and a half. I've done that. And then another time I left the computer cord at home and didn't even bring it here. So I was like preemptively making sure I wouldn't forget the computer cord here because I would forget it at home. So you can't forget it here if you forgot it there. Let's just hope I don't throw in a third or fourth location for where I may be traveling with this computer cord. And then it's just going to be a wild goose chase all over fucking town looking for a computer cord. Just buy a computer cord and have it for wherever you need to be. That seems like excess. Uh, and I, I don't love excess, as you know. I, I joke with my buddy Jim today because I, I would be interested to know... Um, I've joked about this once before and I got to, you know, someone has responded to it, but you know, I'm contemplating the future of the show. And I do think that I, I could see myself at some point doing weekly live, uh, uh, quote unquote radio at some point, whether it's just one night a week or whatever, I think I'm going to do one night a week live. And I'd love to get like a uh, paranormal base set up somewhere, like buy a cheap house somewhere in the country and just have like a paranormal studio, have like a, a you know, not a compound. I, I don't need a compound on one person. Um, so I'm one of many people in one body. Uh, so I don't need that, but I, I think I would love to have something like that. And like I have proper, like set it up, to where it's like proper call-ins potentially too, but it wouldn't be competing with coast to coast or my buddy, Jimmy church or my buddy, Dave Trader, any of their shows. I have to find a time slot, you know, maybe like a Saturday night or something or uh, Saturday nights. I don't know about Saturday night, but um, maybe be three in the morning. Who knows? Super late. You know, what about the people who are up super late? They don't get, they don't get any paranormal radio. Um, but yeah, and so uh, my buddy uh, Jim and I are also talking about doing a uh, patron-only hangout. And he's also, so hopefully soon, maybe with our buddy Darcy, we'll get a patron-only hangout going. I'll be letting you know more about that sometime in the near future. But uh, it's just, I get so amped up and I get so jacked up. I'm going to be on the road a bunch this summer, so I'm going to be doing a ton of stand-up comedy, which I love, which will always be my number one. But um but obviously I've been doing this for almost 10 years. So clearly I also love this, this is one B this is love one B and then, uh, you know, milkshakes, is maybe two a, but, uh, the point is I feel like we're on the verge of something. I don't mean I'm on the verge of discovering something or cracking the code or getting the answers. 
or anything like that. What I mean is I feel like collectively as human beings, we are on the verge of something. And I know people always say this, right? Like they think something big's going to happen in their lifetime. That's very emblematic of a human being to always think that it's going to happen while they're here or while they're doing something, right? But truth be told, I do believe that probably in my lifetime, there will be something uh, something that breaks through in a way. I mean, we've had so many huge breakthroughs recently when it comes to other areas of life. And then we have the soft disclosure that's happening as well. And I think we're, I think we are on the verge of something and the paranormal world. I don't think we're ready for it. I don't think, you know, we talk a big talk. We, we definitely talk a big talk. We had a moment in Mount Shasta a few weeks ago where the message was, are you ready? And we were like, yeah. And then the message was like, seriously, though, you think you're ready? And we had a moment where it was like, okay, you know, reality check here. Are we ready? I'm not sure any of us are truly ready outside of those who have already experienced extremely profound firsthand phenomena. And to be clear, I'm not one of those people, I don't think. I, I think I'm, I'm on the fringe of that, right? With a few different experiences. You know, you couple all my experiences together and you got me on the outside, on the fringe of that. But uh, one of them sent me into therapy. I've, I'm still in therapy. It's been almost three years. Well, it's been three years. Yeah. Three years right now, practically. I think it was about three years ago coming up next week when I went to Florida. So, wow. Or was it four years? Has it been four or five? I don't even want to think about it. What is time? Uh, so that answers that question right there. Was I ready? No, I was not ready. I was in no way, shape, or form even close to being ready. And the proof's in the pudding. The proof's in the paranormal pudding, pal. Hey, pal, the proof's in the paranormal pudding, pal. Precisely. So I do think we're on the verge of something. And I don't, if I had to guess, most, if not all of us, aren't completely ready for it. You know, we can, we can wax whimsical and have fun having conversations uh, about, you know, aliens and being part of the intergalactic neighborhood and how cool would that be, et cetera, et cetera. But I do think that, and now, now to be clear, when I say we're not ready for it, I don't, I don't buy into the fear narrative of everyone's going to freak out and have a meltdown. Okay. I mean, everybody already should be in therapy. I mean, not everybody can afford it, but um just because of them, especially here in the Western world, because our, our whole system is, is flawed in such a deep, a, a, a deep way, I, in my opinion, that, you know, you're, you're operating against all of your, you know, natural instincts, just to feel like you're doing okay, out here, uh, that you, you know, you're made to feel less than when you don't have a vacation home here in this country, that you're not very successful. Um, you need to have excess. And I mean, the people who I, I'm not trying to come down hard on foodies, but the people who eat like extravagant meals for every meal, like what they say, I'm just a foodie. That's like, oh, so you're eating like Kings who had, you know, slaves. I mean, the, like you're basically eating the, uh, the King's meal, the King, you know, that's why they say eat like a King or eat like a queen. It's like, no, you're not, you're not supposed to do that. Well, not that you're not supposed to, but it's, crazy that you think that's just what life should be eating the most ex extravagant and best and most delicious thing for every meal um, as that's just what your meal plan should be as opposed to I, it you get it i'm not trying to you know i'm not trying to sound like the uh, proletariat over here but <laughs> we all know that i am deeply entrenched in the pro proletariat at least in the mindset of the proletariat. And I have empathy for the proletariat. I just not into the bourgeoisie, uh, not into that, not into the, the bougie, not into the bougie at all, but are aliens bougie? 
I, do we have to have this conversation right now? Are aliens bougie? Who, who, who would propose such a question? Are aliens bougie? Do we have like an amba- like a bougie ambassador to aliens? Like, yes, my name is my name is Niles. Okay, Niles, you're the uh, bougie ambassador to the ETs. Yes, ETs only like caviar. Okay, Niles, thank you. We don't need another character coming in right now. But maybe I'll have to write that down so I don't. Don't forget who you are. You'll never forget me. I'm Niles. Okay, Niles. Very good. I loved Frasier. Maybe that's why I picked the name Niles. You didn't pick it. That's my name. Okay, Niles. Sure. I'm sure it's your name. What was I even talking about before Niles interrupted? You were talking about eating. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's right. I was talking about the proletariat. It has nothing to do with the paranormal. Now I'm just trying to spread communist propaganda. The point is, we are becoming accustomed, slowly but surely, in a mainstream mass, in a mass level kind of way. And I think that we aren't counting our victories appropriately as lovers of the paranormal and those desirous of the world being open to all of these ideas and concepts. We got to count our victories. You know what I mean? And we're not doing that. We're just like, oh man, the world still thinks still, nobody pays attention to it. People don't think shape shifting is. And shape shifting is getting more and more attention in the last few years, showing up in a lot more television programs. That's why, you know, I'm wanting to do Shapeshifter Summer and I've, I've kind of already started it. Um, this is not part of the Shapeshifter Summer, this particular episode, but point is, we got to count our victories because it's happening. There are so many paranormal podcasts now. There are, you know, when I started this, I was, I think me and Ron Towski, I don't really remember knowing of any other comedians who were really doing paranormal stuff when I first started doing this. And now there are so many comedians doing paranormal podcasts. Um, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I don't think it is. But what that shows you is this is spreading. This has spread. This is out there. Um, We got to count the victories and the victories are more and more people being open to it. So people feel less and less marginalized and feel less crazy and aren't afraid anymore to share their stories of the unknown or the supernatural. That when someone has a paranormal experience, they don't feel like they have to keep it hidden like some dirty secret. The world is opening up to it. And that's a great thing. We're going to, we're going to put a bow on this one. This is, you know, a shorter one and that's fine. There's short, long, maybe this is long. Maybe if you listen to 15 minute podcast, you're like, this is a long podcast. Well, I love you. I hope you love yourself. Uh, Thank you for watching and or listening to the show. Um, Breaking news, by the way, breaking news. Um, Definitive contact, in my opinion, of communication with extraterrestrial intelligence was captured in Mount Shasta. And not only that, it was also captured at Post Town. And I promise I'm going to get the bridge out to you all in all in its completed form very soon. I just, God, I just want it to be perfect. You got to stop being a perfectionist. But there's something to be said about being perfect. Okay, Niles. RyanSingerComedy.com, that's got uh, tour dates, uh, backslash tour, or you can just click on the tour dates tab at the website, and you will see I am all over the place this summer. I'd love to sell out the show in San Francisco at the San Francisco Punchline. It's a Tuesday. I think it's September 15th uh, is the date on that. Let me let me get my face to unlock this phone. I fucking hate this, dude. Like I have face thing enabled. Then it says you have to enter your passcode to enable the face thing. It's like, fuck you, dude. I just looked at this phone. Like technology is the only thing that really deeply pisses me off anymore. Um, oh, it's the 19th. That makes me happy. Uh, September 19th is a Tuesday night. I'll be at the San Francisco Punchline. I'd love to see you there at that show. Let's pack the place out with a bunch of fucking weirdos. And let's have a great night laughing. Um, and, you know, that's like a Live Nation club. So that's a cool, you know, Live Nation is the biggest booker in the world. Um, 
let's show Live Nation that the paranormal posse can show up, right? Uh, and also lovers of comedy. If you like my stand-up comedy, I'd love to see you there. Um, what else? Oh, give me a follow on uh, Instagram at Rye Sing. I'm also on TikTok, Ryan Sing Comedy. Crystallize uh, the app, the Crystal ID app is still out there, baby. We're loving it. Uh, and we've got 200 more crystals being added to the brain as soon as we get them done getting trained, which some of that just takes time to train the computer, the AI. And I'm over here bashing on AI. I'm like, download my app that's got AI in it. Um, but this is a good, this is a good AI. And it wants to help you uh, remember what your crystals are and keep track of them. Uh, not to mention promote ethically sourced crystals. So crystallize.app backslash download, or just go to crystallize.app or search for it in the Apple store or the Google play store. And you'll find it. You can download it for free. What else have we got going on? That's about it. Um, I hope to see you at a live comedy show. Uh, whether it's in Los Angeles or whether it's in, uh, if you're in Los Angeles and listening to this, I'll be at the Lyric Hyperion on Saturday night, 930 doing Comedia Cinema Club. Me and a bunch of comics are reenacting the movie Fight Club, basically from memory. It's always a crazy, wild monthly uh, show. Uh, tickets are affordable. Look at my Instagram stories for that. I love you. Hope you love yourself. You deserve it. And if I don't see you at a show, I'll see you at the watering hole on the astral plane.